All right, let's get into it. I got Fred and Witty from 1320 Video. They've been down here for a sick week, and now they are down here for the Pro Superstar Shootout by Skag. They, I, I was listening to the announcers make fun of how long the name is. It's it's a lot. <laughs> it's, it's a, a, it's a wordy a lot, name. There's a lot going on there, yeah. So you guys are down here. Is this your first, like, top fuel funny car experience? We went to Pomona two years ago? Yeah. We went to Pomona two years ago. It was the first NHRA event I think any of us had ever been to. Wild ex- <laughs> It's fun. The finals. Dude, actually, shit went limp over there. Bro. No. Yeah. yeah, I went to the finals at Pomona. Yeah, we went to the. It, it was it was really awesome to go to that, and we got to go up the starting line and all that stuff, and it was cool to experience for sure. But this is like a different animal, because like where the people stand on the fence to the wall of the track is thirty feet. Yeah, you are thirty feet away, thir- thirty-five. We'll say thirty-five feet away from twelve thousand horsepower. There is no NHR event anywhere you're going to get that close. No. Yeah, like people go to Gainesville for the Gator Nationals. That's like the big Florida one. Mm-hmm. But like, it's so far away. You're in a um, stadium, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is a quaint little facility, dude. It is, and they packed them in there. I've never seen. That was the most. I don't know who organized or orchestrated the parking of everybody. Tip of the hat. Killed I was it. thinking that same thing. I Tip was like, the hat. these drivers are badass because the tents, like, they don't know how long the tents are going to be. Brother. And then they're up against each other with, like, an inch to spare. I'm it's like, crazy. Oh. It's crazy how they do that stuff. That yeah. is I don't get how it's so, like, with FL2K, I mean, those are smaller setups, and it seems way more packed. Like, well, it's it, a bunch of idiots. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, we don't do this professionally at FL2K. <laughs> right, but they, they're buttoned up. They packed they, them, and they, I mean, they're taking some of the Freedom Factory's landscape or, yeah. or mm-hmm. the parking lot over there to fit everybody, but, geez, so many so many setups over there. As in idiots, I mean people that don't professionally race like me. Like, just us, normal You know, people, people that kind of just roll up, and they're just like, yeah. I hope to park next to my buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Versus, like, the professional teams like you look at um what is it elite motorsports where they're like yeah 14 cars and 12 tents like Mm -hmm. they have like half the field is elite motorsports that's what makes it i mean at least for me as a photographer like having those big teams everything's so colorful and the team's jerseys match and the car matches and as like trying to capture content that's you know visually appealing everything's always filling the frame and like i said it's colorful and there's action and at all these big production events, there's just signage and people, and it just seems like everything looks cool. It's almost hard to take a bad photo at these, mm-hmm. and I think it'd be cool to kind of merge the streetcar world and then NHRA and bring it down to where it's more personal. You can kind of get to know the drivers more. Maybe you don't have to, like, wait in line to, or it, an hour for an interview. NHRA feels like just corporate, and then... This does not feel corporate yeah. when we're at this event. It's yeah. just, it feels like what it is, which is just like 12,000 horsepower cars going down a track that was never in, the, like, this was never intended to have those cars on. Yeah, I mean, 341 miles an hour, the fastest piston car ever down a track. Yeah, and this is at Bradington. This isn't at a big NHRA track that they go to every year. Mm-hmm. This is... The Wait. first time they've been in Brayton since I don't know twenty years. When's the last time they did actually did a uh, race here? I don't. I know it's been fifteen since they've done Nitro. Okay, but you know, fifteen years ago was such a different. Like they're Dude, not the same they were, car. They were almost still running. I think quarter, quarter mile. mile. I think it's so twelve years. Oh seven or oh eight. I think it's when they when they started doing thousand foot. Mm-hmm. So a little more than fifteen years ago is when they stopped doing stopped doing quarter mile. I was watching, there was a pretty cool video of John Forsett um, running at Bradenton in 1984. Jeez. And, like, you know, the Freedom Factory's in the background, and they're, yeah. like, again, like a young John Forrest interview, and I'm like, he has just been racing forever. He's, yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah, I, he's just, he's timeless. They said 155 career wins. Damn. That's, like, seven a year <laughs> since he started doing it, they said. I was like, it's just, like, is unfathomable. How long do you think he's going to keep racing for? I don't know if he'll ever really stop. How old is he now? He's in his, maybe let's say that'd be worth a Google. He's yeah, in his, he's in his seventies. Hey, Jamie, easy. Yeah. Jamie, can you look that up? Yeah, he's we got it. Do you, you ain't <laughs> got a Jamie yet? It's been a year since we've been here. You ain't upgraded to a Jamie. I don't have anybody. I was thinking, I I would love like an AI system, okay, right. you know, like a like a yeah. sit in that I could just that'd have cool. do that and maybe run like a camera switcher or something. But we're not there yet. 
I don't know. Maybe he would take my job, so that's, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> I would just be obsolete at that point. But the drivers seem really happy and relaxed as well, not being an HRA event. And, I, you know, not to bag on them too much, even though I've openly attacked NHRA my entire career. <laughs> they just, I, I don't enjoy their whole operation. So it's nice to see like these, the drivers sticking it to them by putting bigger payouts and the pro event, which is the uh, professional racers organization putting on this event, giving themselves big payouts, what they deserve to run cars that they have to turn around in 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. They only get 50 minutes to turn those cars around. Mm -hmm. All new everything. I can't even cool my car down in 50 minutes. Okay, so I was talking to one of the guys on the Clay Millican crew, and I was like, how fast can you guys do this if you guys are all like, you're on board or whatever? And he said, well, right now, since this is preseason, basically right now, uh, almost everybody's in a new job to what they were last year. So everybody's still learning and everything. He's like, but... There was a crew apparently in seventeen or sixteen or seventeen that uh, tore it down in twenty six or tore it down, put it back together twenty six minutes. They pulled it into the pit spot. He told me, and within two minutes, it was bare block. And then it, within the next twenty four minutes, completely reassembled and running. Just think about how hot that car still, that motor still is. Yeah, the pistons were probably still warm when they put them back in, dude. Yeah. Like, that's wild. You see them, they have, like, special tools to grab stuff with, and some have gloves or something. The clutches. The clutches. Yeah. The clutches. They have, like, little, yeah. They got to sit there and, like, measure the clutches when they're thousands Smoking of degrees. Still. It's, yeah. It's like, so crazy. They're, like, gloved all the way up to their – they they set up, like, full cleaning stations. I, like, this is my first time experiencing that, where, like, every team sets up a whole booth area, like, a whole tent, just for, like, cleaning off parts. <laughs> and, like, that just doesn't even, like, make sense that they're going through this much stuff. And another funny thing my wife said while we were watching it, she's like, I feel like, you know, these guys really, like, run an event. Like, there's no, like, oil downs. There's not tractors constantly. I'm like, yeah, they're kind of professionals. <laughs> like, you go to sick week and you see a lot of tractors. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> now, a stat that I like to tell people, because this put in perspective for us when we went to our first event in Pomona for NHRA stuff, was if they don't break anything, every single hit is twelve to $15,000. If they don't break anything. Now, with that being said, if you win an NHRA event, you get fifty grand. So that covered three hits, which is qualifying. Mm -hmm. So it didn't even cover the elimination rounds. You get fifty grand at NHRA. You get two hundred fifty grand at this event. Mm -hmm. Insane. This event is weird too because they've never allowed testing previously. To there's no testing the days up to an NHRA event. It's qualifying. Mm -hmm. They have been testing since Monday. Yeah. So like these, any team that wanted to test, yeah, That's they sick. have a lot of laps on their cars already. They kind of have a good grasp on the track which is why you're seeing 241 miles an hour that it's just awesome to in see q3 that. fastest pass ever it at bradenton it just doesn't even it's so cool that that's at the home track the, the, the coolest part is it's at a track that shouldn't have those cars at it yeah. and that just gives it a testament first of all to the track victor and all them guys because like that track like those cars shouldn't be doing that they should be doing that at a nhra big track Z Max that holds fifty thousand people. It's a different vibe at this. Oh, it's it's a complete that that event right there is a vibe right now. Like I can't vibe. wait till tomorrow. We're gonna have to get there at five a.m. to beat people there, but it's gonna be a vibe. Like we've done streetcar takeover, we've done FL two K, the GTR World Cup, we've done a bunch of events. Cletus and cars like a ton of things Worldwide. at Bradenton, <laughs> and well. No, like even just at Bradenton, yeah, and which is like oh, yeah, yeah. it's like our cars, our people. And you're just kind of running around, no one really – like, obviously, don't be dumb. Don't want to run the track when it's live. But you can pretty much go wherever and do whatever, and it's chill. And it's crazy that, like, when we went to the NHRA event out in Pomona, it was very strict. I, everywhere I went, I was, like, checking over my shoulder three times to make sure I wasn't walking in front of cars, mm -hmm. cameras. Somebody – just everyone is going so fast and in a huge hurry. And I was like, shit. But here, dude, it's like – it's so weird. Like, we're at the chill track, and it seems pretty chill. That's honestly the vibe. I Because when, we when we went to Pomona, it almost felt like I was at my first drag race again. 
Yeah. It was like I felt so out of place, and it was just like it was— Almost felt like we didn't belong. Yeah, it was really weird. It's like we filmed drag racing. I should feel mm-hmm. like I should—it was weird. And then here, it feels like we're at like a streetcar takeover with 12,000 horsepower cars. Yeah, like, you know, COTS? Like, it was, it's not yeah. not as aggressive, but, dude, the start line. And you're talking a street race. There's so many people up here at the NHRA thing. I'm, dude, okay, so I get down up against the wall so I can get, like, this real low shot of the car launching with, like, the sky and everything in the back. And I get down to where I am literally from me to you, actually probably closer, to be completely honest. I'm from me to you from the headers to the back rear tire. And this thing just, whoom. And, like, I have to recover to, like, see again and breathe again. I mean, it is just insane. You just come out of it laughing with a big smile on your face. Yeah, there's no way I could stand where I'm standing right now at an NHR event no. for cars. Oh, there'd be, it's, like, 12 people, like, you no, because no one's allowed the up there until you move. Oh, yeah. It would be facts. Stop all. But the that's everything. so cool. Like, I walked up there, and I was just I was filming these top fuel funny cars and top, just top fuel rail cars just like like there were any other car standing where I where I want to on the track to get the good shot and it's just it's wild there's nothing like seeing those flames out of the nitro cars 10 like foot flames it, it is insane out of each cylinder like the, it the flames are just awesome but to talk about Bradenton I know so many people that live in like states like Ohio and stuff that consider Bradenton their home track <laughs> Just because they're like, that's our home track. Like, we go to Bradenton to race. Like, it's just, you know, like the IDS guys are always like, oh, yeah, you know, like, Bradenton's the home, like, down there. And it's just funny because it it is for a lot of people, especially throughout the winter where most of the country isn't racing. And then Bradenton's spraying more glue than any other track ever. And they had to scrape from the 1,000-foot to the starting line for this race. That's what I heard, yeah. Because it's, you know, it's a radial prep track, and these t- tires, I don't know, I guess they're weird. They don't like that radial prep. They just scraped the whole sticky. thing and then put all the rubber down. Mm-hmm. Well, it's too sticky. I remember they say for, like, the big tires, they need yeah. a little slit so they can kind of come over on themselves. It's weird because I have been the, I have been outspoken about how I didn't really care about this style racing very much. But then... You know, when it's here and when it's outlaw, it's like it it piques the interest a lot more. That isn't that weird. See, if NHRA came down to Bradenton, it'd be like, mm. it's like it's corporate event. It's like I just feel like it's just going to be like, oh, you know, we're going to stop racing for commercial breaks and this, that, and the mm-hmm. other. It's like, but then this, you go to this, and it's like it's being broadcast on float just like it would be an NHRA event. Exact same thing. They got top end interviews and all that stuff on flow, but it just feels like. This is like, like you said, like an outlaw race. This shouldn't be happening, and it's awesome that it is. It makes me like Top Fuel a lot more watching it like this, for sure. And it just—I I don't know why. I don't know. Like, I get what I get what you're saying, but it just is weird how it just just connects differently. Yep. I don't know, and maybe that'll bring more people to NHRA and more people into Top Fuel, but they probably don't see it that way. They probably see it as like. How dare you step on our, our yeah, deal? Yeah, exactly. You know they self tech. There's what do you not mean? like all the top alcohol top fuel guys. They self tech. There's no guy that inspects their cars. Really? I, I didn't know that. that. That's what Clay told me. I was like, oh, oh. how do they, how do they tech? They're like, oh, we self tech. Like, is it? Hang on. So, so the fastest cars <laughs> in the world, NHRA self-tech. doesn't tech them. They self tech. But, but if you want to run a nine ninety nine, they're gonna they're gonna throw you out if you don't have a bar? Like, really? Is this what we're talking about? That's what Clay the same, said. The same people I don't doing understand that? how they implement a rule. Like, they, they stiffened up the chassis for this year on the on the uh, top fuel. So they need how to check they... to make sure they're stiffer, right? They're, or they're just going to be like, ah, uh, who who welded it together? Oh, Bob? Bob does a good it job. It looks we good. Know, we know Bob. <laughs> Bob did good. It's weird. I don't know. I, they self-tech. I mean, I know at this race they have some tech directors, but they don't, like, you know, you don't line up and go through every car. Okay, but here's the deal. It's not like we're looking at, like, 800 cars on the property. There's 12 <laughs> top fuel cars. We can't get one guy to walk to 12 different pit spots. They don't even have to take it anywhere. Just have one guy walk around 12 cars. That'll take an hour. Well, think we'll about be, this. We'll like, be done. So, you know, you've been to World Cup. They check your turbo. They, Seriously. like, mark things, like, so oh, yeah. they know. 
they pull this car apart every run. Like, what are those markings, like, or, like, checking anything? Like, it's all gone at that point. <laughs> like, you can't... <laughs> it doesn't make much sense, because, like, at, they're strict at World Cup, but, like, you're not changing your engine after every other run. Yeah, that's true. It's fairly frequent, but it's not as frequent as these guys. So, like, okay, you measured the piston this run. The sleeve is in the trash <laughs> after that run. Like, they had a, a trash can full of sleeves, just of engine sleeves. They just knock them out. <laughs> it's just a different world. I guess maybe it gives them just like a tiny bit. I mean, just off the top, maybe it gives them a little bit more freedom with what they can do because it's so strict with the engine, the size, displacement, like everything they're restricted to. They're kind of running the same setup. So, and I know racing is kind of just pushing the limits and figuring out what you can and can't do. So, Maybe it's good that they self tech because there can be like little things that, you know, not that they're like breaking the rules, but maybe there's little things they can change here and there that give them an advantage that can at least give some kind of competitiveness to what they're doing. It's weird because, like, you know, to, to switch up like Ultra Street, which James races, they changed this year. You can no longer run brass nitrous jets, you have to be stainless steel because the brass ones wear out over time. And they don't measure the same. Oh. So everybody had to switch their jets. Hmm. And they don't even make Weird. stainless steel. Everybody uses brass. So, like, they had to get all these custom ones made for ultra That would have been a great That would have been a great opportunity to start creating Oh, yeah, the stainless guy who steel. made that rule should have had a company going under a different LLC or there something. There you go. Well, <laughs> not all companies are okay either, I guess. Oh. So, like, really? Well, Nitrous, they can really just give all the money to one. Like, Nitrous Outlet, I think, jumped on it real quick. Um, David Vassner. Yeah, yeah. He was pretty quick on it because somebody had to make them. Yeah. So he was making them for all the Ultra Street guys. But it's just like one of those things where this tiny little rule, and even like bottle size, they like they switched from like you couldn't have 20 pounds, you had to have 10 pounders. Like, the rules are so tight on all these things. And then you get up into top field and they're just like, Live it up, dude. It's like, or, well, it's probably like, how fast could they possibly go? <laughs> like, how much faster? It's like, even if they didn't do what we told us, like, how much faster could they possibly go? I it's think like, we're going to well, see like, faster. It's like, well, 241, apparently. We'll see you faster than that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I, know, I, I think I said the same thing. Yeah. 341. <laughs> Tomorrow, I mean, when they're actually like balls to the wall, I think we're going to see faster. Oh, I think the night air helped a lot as well. Yeah. Because last night is when we did 339, it's night 341. Oh, yeah. And then they did chip draw, like friggin' outlaws. Really? I didn't see I Yeah, didn't they that. chip drew. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, they went up on the stage and drew chips for a first round. That's cool as hell. That's super <laughs> cool. Like, this is like a street race. <laughs> I love it. And Okay, yeah. so you know how you're talking about like it's different to see these guys and it's like you're, you're sort of interested in the top fuel? All the guys that are here, Fred was mentioning, all the people that are here racing are here because they want to be here. They want to race. They're actually racers. Like, the guys that... Like did, there's other NHRA teams that did not come out for this. Yeah, and it's like, like they're just like, funny nah. Teams that they, they, they could have come out to this, and they said, no, we're not going to come to that event. Well, it was also invitational. So some people... Didn't even, didn't get, even get an invite? Oh. Didn't. But if they turned it down. Which is real unfortunate. I'm sure some ignored it because yeah. they just, yeah. cause this isn't the start of their point series. I just think it's so cool. They don't want to They don't want to put more damage on the car. Or but, but you're getting reps with the crew. I see that as huge. Well, Tons of test passes like you said. Yeah, Tony Stewart isn't driving this. He starts NHRA at the Gator Nationals in a couple weeks. Mm. Leah Pruitt is still driving it. Until Leah's, until the Gator Nationals. Stewart? Yeah, they're switching over after this event. Gotcha. Which is an interesting deal there, too. Yeah. He he chose, maybe he has a deal with NHRA. Where where he won't go to out loud. He has to and, race that. Since she's no longer a driver, she can do it, technically. I, yeah, I don't know. There's big names. John Force here, Ron Caps here. I mean, every, all the big guys that I ever really remember seeing. I don't think NHRA here. can tell... John Force to do anything. I think he can do whatever the hell he wants. If he glad stopped he's showing up to an event at NHRA, I think they would lose a lot of their participation. Yeah, so if, if they're like, you can't do that, and he's like, I'll just retire. 
And then they're <gasps> you can like, do- you can just hear the gasps at the front offices of NHRA. It's oh. like, <gasps> no, 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 no. He'll just come run sick week or something. If you, oh, <laughs> oh my God. God. And a funny car. Can you imagine like a funny car, like Some put nitro. to street mode? <laughs> or get like Tom Bailey, Lutz, maybe like Larson, like a bunch of guys together. And then they build John Force a drag and drive car. Lutz is a big Top fuel guy. I mean, he's there Lutz all week. Lots freaking wrenching on Milliken's he's car. He's literally, yeah, he's part of the crew. He's working hard. He's on the supercharger crew. At least today he was. You know those things are like 100 pounds? The, oh, we still have struggling. It looked off. tough. Like, oh, it looked like, wicked. The, the one guy was like, lift, so the at uh, uh, Milliken's uh, pits, they were taking the supercharger. They were putting it on. And one of the guys is way taller than the other guy. I was like, this doesn't seem fair at all. The other guy's like, ah. Like the other guys have to lift it up. And he's just like, oh, here we go. The but, nitro bath is fun. The uh, you know they start those things up, and you're all of a sudden you're just like, oh god, dude. Watching please. my favorite thing now is now tomorrow will be a lot more people, so we'll probably get more people on this one. Is people that have not been to an event with NHRA cars uh, warming up in the pits. Oh, their car started. Let me go over and film it. And then, dude, I saw a family. The dad was like the only one that wasn't didn't look like. He, first, he had like tears in his eyes, but all the kids and the wife. So three kids and the wife. Had their shirts above here. You could tell the kids were crying, but like <laughs> not like tears, but they were like, I can't breathe, like crying, like scared crying. And they were walking away from the pits and just seeing all the adults that are just like, this is fine. And then like the grown men start crying and run away and gassy for air. Oh, it's the funnest thing in the world to see. We were all bathing in it yesterday and I saw James Tall just sitting there like eyes wide open. I was like, you're just like fighting through it right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> For what? <laughs> so uh, if you go, so t- are you going tomorrow? I'm going to try to make it out tomorrow. Okay. You need to. If, uh, it, if it's if it's too crap, if the line to get in is like an hour, well, just, just have to. If the <laughs> line is coming through your neighborhood, then yeah, you should probably not go. That's true. It might start right here. <laughs> right. But uh, I was circle the Starbucks and then we'll go. <laughs> Jesus. Park and get a scooter. Yeah. Yeah, that honestly, that's actually a better route. Um, I've you can park pretty far away and have somebody on a golf cart ride the shoulder way up to get you. That's fair. And you can kind of just skip some of the line. Like if you park like a garage shop or something, or like oh far yeah. down there. That's a good call. Yeah, take yeah. a scooter or something. You can skip or like James's house is like right up the street. Also, we're getting yeah. there real early yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like early. early you can real almost early. walk through the woods to get there, but that's like. You know, I've heard that of uh, early South Georgia, like, lights out, where people were literally just, like, at the fences to get in because there was so there was so much, like, Hype. desire to get in, and the tickets were sold out, and people were, like, climbing under fences and stuff. And, like, Jesus. Yeah, That's like, cool, some though. of those early lights out. The fact that people out, were that excited about drag racing, hell yeah. Especially lights out. I mean, it's such a heritage event. You know, it's it's lost some of its sparkle, I think, in the last five years because radial tire racing has become a little weird i would say yeah it's not as big as it used to be like you used to hear every of every one of ducks of events you'd see hear the record would get broke like at least twice or something like that well the problem is rvw died like they don't even have rvw at a bunch of different races and then those were the really fast cars they all kind of switched to pro mod pro mod is now huge 50 cars per event big tire but then radial tire racing is so tough to spectate. That's what I think does it. Because you guys know more than anyone how much time you're sitting around at a radial tire race. Yeah, there's a... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Streetcar Super Nationals. Oh, my gosh. They had to refuel three that, tractors. So, oh, every in Vegas. Time. If we want to switch it up, you want to talk about one of the events that just... Oh, my gosh. I have never seen that many oil downs at a single event. And apparently... They were tech, like tech was supposed to, they were supposed to have diapers and belly pans and all that stuff. Well, first. And uh, I don't know how you miss that many because there's no way. I guess they didn't check very hard. The the cars there, Buddy. top notch. Some of the sweet, the oh, fastest, awesome, awesome cars most beautiful the cars. Event. Track was sick. But then you got to think it's the it last event rough. of the year for all these guys on the West Coast. Pretty much until, you know, winter break. I guess it was freezing. We were in, like, winter coats and stuff. Yeah, so it's, it like... It's cold at that track, surprisingly. It did get chilly. Uh, our, we experienced our first haboob. Oh, yeah. You know what a haboob is? It's a sandstorm. Didn't know that because there, there's a haboob coming. I was like, what the fuck are we talking racist. about? Like, I don't know what the hell this Jesus. is. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No, but I was like, like what are so, <laughs> one, so over the th- three days we were there, three days we were there, 26 oil downs. 
like what he said, they had to refill like the tra- real oil downs where they like break at the starting yeah. line. Yeah. Like two down. hours and to clean real up. quick on top of that. They're four lanes wide. Okay. So they would they'd be running uh I think a slick tire in these lanes and then radial in these lanes. Mm-hmm. And they were down to like the last pair for radial on this lane and oiled down. Like second to last pair oiled down, so one more pair. They had to clean the entire track and everything, so this one last car go, and then they switched over to over here. Like we were down so much, I like we took. I felt like I fell asleep. Oh my goodness! Just, like standing. We they they called it Sunday at like two o'clock. The yeah, morning. the thing was we were only like a round or two into eliminations, and it was like literally two a.m. on, on the sun, last day, and they're yeah. like, "Sorry, guys." Which it sucks. I mean, it has the potential to be just an incredible event. The, like the I worst said. part is they wanted us to come out to the event for years, and it just overlapped with other stuff. And finally, and we went fun. out, and then like it was just like, twenty six oh oil downs. It was like the oil down nationals, bro. Uh, I, I was like this. I felt, well, I felt bad for the organizer because it was like it's not his. Yeah, it's like the, the right. these people keep blowing up during his race, and he was just he yeah. was he was not. Well, that's the that. thing. All of my favorite events are kind of falling into that a lot. These oil downs, like the. You know, FL two Ks, World Cup, TX two Ks, these like street car, but you have to push them to their limit of yeah. excess. And then you end up blowing your shit up or trans is let's go and like you know, they're lower budget teams, but they have to push their cars very, very hard. I think the only real uh thing to fix that situation is just uh Jason Miller at any one of these events. Cause like you can a Honda can oil down a thousand foot of the track, and Jason Miller have the track back up in thirty minutes. Now he is quick. He is quick, but, but he has a lot of team with him. That is true. Yeah, and these events normally are like we got three guys. They need bigger. That's one of them didn't show up. We like, we considered him here. <laughs> But that's what I'm saying. It's like it would, t- in order for it to be efficient and even yeah. clean up that type of stuff, it, where cars are right now. It, well, at 2K, you have wrecks that happen during roll racing because it's so so those because those cars are so insane. Yeah. The only time those cars race is at that race, like probably in the barn most of the year. Then you pull 3,500 horsepower out, and we'll see what they do on a track. Well, there's people that have never seen their car until that morning, dude. I've never actually laid I've, eyes on this Lamborghini dude, that I own. Like that's not. It's that's across the board, but especially there because they make so much power, and these guys can spend so much money on it. But that's across the board at two K. We'll we'll talk to people and be like, "Yeah, the car's getting delivered this weekend." I'm like, "You're gonna drive it in the event this weekend, or even better, you're gonna drive it on the record, or you're gonna drive it on the street this weekend, and it's being delivered, and it makes seventeen hundred now, and you gave it to them and made seven, and you're just gonna go on the street, and it's gonna be fine. Let's not do that." Or, yeah, the that. Let's go to the event, have the car delivered there. I've never driven a car this much power, probably a 1,000 or more horsepower than I've ever driven before, and we're just going to see how this goes. That sounds terrible. That well, sounds that's why the owners of these shops end up driving a lot of them. Calvo drives a bunch of cars. Which is like, smart. Uh, Kit, it's Kevin smart. Kevin and Casey yeah. both drive a bunch of cars from underground. And yeah. It makes sense. You know, it kind of defeats the purpose of building the car a little bit. But you see your car and you're going to tell people, I think for them, they're going to be like, yeah, yeah, I had a seven second car. Or my car did this. Well, and their friends don't care that they didn't race the it. The way I kind of look at it, they're like uh, minor league professional team owners at that point. They own this car that makes 4,000 horsepower and they don't have to drive it. They just mm-hmm. get to brag about what it does, which is what like oh, yeah. an NFL team owner would do. They don't have to play the it's game. It's a conversation piece when you're talking to your buddies and they got to hold it. Yeah, these guys are just at a level where they they can just come play with their side money and destroy every record in streetcar stuff and they just brag to their buddies and they didn't do anything. They just paid a shop and the shop took the car out. Yeah, and then those rules are very loose at those events at it Te- has to be in roll racing cuz Sa- nobody would sh- no none of these cars would pass any sort of tech. You can't Sa- have a diaper on a V10. You can't put a roll cage in a Huracan really. You can. No, that's the thing You though. can't put like a 253 like they need. You can. I haven't seen that. I've seen roll bars. Okay, Dallas Performance actually did a really good cage in their shop car. It's it's not even a Huracan, it's a Gallardo. Mhm. And that thing makes crazy power, and they put crazy cage in that thing. I was like, I've never seen a cage like this. It's like nobody's ever done one. So it maybe can, Jordan at no. um, AMS actually. So he's it, probably one of the rare exceptions of a car that has he has safety, the correct yeah, amount yeah. of safety for. But it's it. like it can be done. It's just they're not doing it because they don't have to. If there's no tech that says you have to have this cage to go 
two thirty or whatever the hell they're doing at, at these events now, they're not going to do it. But ninety eight percent of them still wouldn't, and they just wouldn't show up. That'd be the flip side of it. They just wouldn't show up, which I get it. I mean, hey, cut roll race, and I'm good with that, you know? Yeah, but that's... It's not any skin off my back personally. It was, yeah, but at 2K, it's kind of like that's Peter's way of bringing the streets to a safer environment. Because, I mean, they all used to street race back in the day. All those guys used to street race back in the day. And now it's kind of like just bring it to the track instead. So they can still have their cars, too. With roll racing, I mean, if they didn't have roll racing, it's wouldn't get to see all the cool Lambos and Vipers and stuff. That's they don't true. drag race. I'm, I, I'm fine with it. It's just the safety aspect is tough. It, it, it's it's kind of hard to think about, especially when oh well, they they did shorten the track 250 feet last year, which did prevent a lot of wrecks. Which shortening just brings it down to 1320, right? Instead, I don't know how long the track was. For, I think before. it was about 15. I don't know the exact specs. Yeah, but. so they just shortened it to a more reasonable whole thing. Right, but then. Is the new Dallas track the same, longer, or shorter than Houston? I think Houston it's like a mirror image. It's about the same. Okay. It's, it's like just flip-flopped from, like, instead of the stage lanes going to the right, they go to the left. All right, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're like mirror image of each other mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a decent track. We've been to it a bunch of times before. Yeah. I hope it has the 2K vibe once mm. we're there. I, like, it's going to be weird because it's been in Houston for the past, I don't know. There better many, be eight, some buckies nearby. We gotta like. I hope we can drive over a bridge with water. Oh no! I looked it up. No, I looked it up. <laughs> I mean, Actually, our hotel. Yeah. Uh, Bucky's is like on the way to the track. Oh, so we can still Perfect. get fresh brisket That's on a the board. Good point because the stop on Bucky's on the way to the track is key. Yeah, that is nice. If you don't have, have that, yeah. that right there is gonna make you start the day thinking, we're at. We're even supposed to eat. Yeah. If I don't get Bucky's, my budget ice at Bucky's because ninety nine cents for ground. a five pound bag of ice, cheapest bro? ice there is twenty pound bag. I thought it was a dollar twenty nine for the twenties. Maybe, but but still, pennies on the dollar. Regardless, the seven pound bags at Wawa are a dollar thirty. Everywhere's. Dude, we paid. It's we water. paid. We paid six bucks for frozen water before. Seven dollars, probably even. Real quick, before we get off, I want to back up to the yeah. oil downs and just like. How you talked about the events you're like in the World Cup TX2K? I'm gonna I'm gonna defend it real quick. So, what are you defending? Oil downs? Yeah, no. So like, you have people, <laughs> more oil down. <laughs> no, no, no. So there's like people that are online that maybe aren't there, or people that aren't there that aren't just like super into it. And they're That's me. I was online. And they're this like, year. this is this is stupid. This is trash boy. Oh my god, get your shit together. Like, just you could bash it and bash it and bash it. But I, I say I said this before. If you want to see safe racing with no oil downs, you're going to be watching some really boring racing because no one's going to be pushing the limits. Everything we see at these races, like World Cup, TX2K, and FL2K, these are all shops or individuals that are basically doing R&D on all of their vehicles, pushing the limits, pushing the power. And I get that you need to be smart and put it together right, have the proper safety, and you need to have a diaper and all that. But... They're pushing the limits so far that it's making it so entertaining that there are mile-long lines to get into every single one of these events that we're talking about here. And if they weren't pushing the limits, I mean, do we just be watching the same racing? We see records, world records, being broken at every single one of those races every single year. Yeah, it's it's like you wouldn't, like, we're not big fans of bracket racing. Like, yeah. I'm fine with some oil downs. Obviously, when there's a shit ton and you're spinning let's say six to eight hours of the day fixing oil downs, then maybe we need to look at something else. But like, well, yeah, there, there's a difference between shit boxes being taken out there and yeah. people yep. just being ignorant being with their in, stuff. Yep. Uh-huh. They're putting bad tune ups in their car thinking, Oh, just put the send it tune in it, whatever. There's a difference between that and people that are like legit just Pushing trying, the limit. trying to get the most out of their car They're faster. That's what I want to see. Some like the problem is these like really good shops that you're talking about usually don't oil it down. It's the cars that you've never seen before and they only come out one time a year. That's the cars that I worry about. Like, I mean, I know that he makes you like, you have to send a pass. Jason Miller, like, you have to send him a pass that you did this. I almost feel like you have to send, like, I've made it three rounds in a race. 
Like, I've actually, like, Instead I didn't of, just make one I, Hail Mary. I, I've actually gone rounds with a car. That's, hey, that's fair. Because, like, mean, those Hail oh, Mary oh, cars. Also, also, we're getting to the point where that race is so damn popular that the slowest car on the property runs nines or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the level the cars motor. are. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, and so at this point, you almost do need, I don't know, that he probably gets so many applications, it's crazy. Yeah. You almost do need another thing to, like, you need to do now this to qualify. Because these cars have never actually, like, competed in a race. Like, a lot of them have run, like, test and tunes and stuff, and, like, nothing wrong with that, but, like, it's very different than having to, like, be able to turn your car around for a second qualifier or multiple rounds to win a race because you have to be more prepared for that. And you've seen people that... Their car blows up and it ran a personal best, and they're cheering. They're fine. They pack up and go home, and that's not what a race is. <laughs> like you got, yeah. you can't be excited about that. Like you got to be like kind of bummed about that. <laughs> your your car's blown up now. Yeah, but it, to them, that's that they got they got something positive out of it. So <laughs> it is what it is. I get that too. I've been there. What are you saying, Woody? I don't know. Lost train of thought. <laughs> it's fine. I love World Cup. Not taking anything away from it. I, you know, to add to that, I, I truly love World Cup TX2K FL2K, and the oil downs are uh, just gonna oh. happen. Yeah, I remember. Okay, so with the oil downs, we're talking about how strict or maybe they need more passes. I had a moment where at sick week, you were talking about also you noticed that there are some oil downs, like especially that first day at Orlando was pretty rough. Yeah. Well, and I had a couple moments where I was thinking, I was like, dude, everybody here should have to turn in a pass or two from the last month to get working setups out here. But but then I thought about how many cars we would lose from sick week if they did that. Dude, there's, like, there's so many cars that they're like, I finished it Thursday. Literally like, so many yeah. cars. The big boys, finish it in the line. weird fun cars, oh, yeah. the middle cars, like it doesn't matter. It could be Jeff Lutz just finished it or the slowest car on the property just finished it. But there are tons of cool cars like that I featured that just finished. And so you like, where's the line there? Because World Cup, I get that. World Cup, you got to turn something in. That is a world-class racing event. Sick week is more chill, but at the same time, like, we got to do something about the oil downs, but you don't want to weed out everybody that kind of just finished. Okay, Okay. let me say this. Yeah. I think the first day weeded out all the people. It usually does. Okay, so I think this is just a thing where the first day of a really big one like this, you're just going to have the most oil downs, and that's just going to weed out – 10% 10% right off the bat of they shouldn't even left the track to begin with and they don't deserve to and that's why they blew up. Well, Cadillac attacked the day before. I was talking to the owner of that and they did a sick week testing day yep, and yep. to get in and he was like, we had 25 oil downs and 24 of them were sick weekers at Cadillac attack. That probably got, uh, probably guys I, he probably, was not thrilled about that. No, Understandably. Dude. Yeah, probably guy, for his yeah probably guys just sitting there and they're, they've got their stuff together. They want to, they need to test before sick week yeah. starts and they blow up. But the, again, same thing on the first day on, on day zero, we had some oil downs, but day one was just excessive. We lost, a, we, the event lost a lot of the big hitters almost instantly as well. I wouldn't say a lot of them. I mean, Devin Vanderhoof was out day one. Uh, Cletus was out day one. Well, you had you still had Jeff and Alex and Brett and the Javelin. I mean, you know, the, all those cars till the end. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was there was like the quarantine had at least twenty badass cars. We in did the lose whole race. Schroeder, I think, on day two. Day two on that deal. There was a couple big cars that went out. I mean, um, Steve Morris never made it to. Yeah, he, did, he didn't even he make it. He didn't even make it to. Right? He didn't Before even make it to there. day zero. Crashed, caught it on fire, blew up the motor, blew up the trans. Oh, and Tom, like three different passes. Tom McGilton car caught on fire, but Tom he Elbert. got. He did find a challenger and raced in that, so he still yeah. enjoyed sick week. They gave him a. They gave him a sick week demon to drive on sick. Yeah, that was nice of them. Yeah, but like yeah. I said, like that was that was a lot of the big cars. Like no, Devin Vanderhoof's yeah, car yeah. should have been. Brett level competitive. Yeah, it's a, it's a fast fast car. I, I don't know. Has he done a big dragon drive like this before? Yeah, he he did sick week last year oh, on the two thirty five. Yeah, that's right. But then he just did did bigger turbos and did a two seventy five and yeah. he went a six forty on his first test pass. So those two cars would have been a good battle. The Swedes were there. The, Swedes the were there, yeah. Corvette did its last final pass. Now I think he's gonna like what. 
hanging on the wall or something. Car's gonna be retired. So yeah. they're bringing out. Oh, I don't know what it is. I can't remember. Like a new car. You yeah. gotta leave it to the Swedes oh, to know. be the C four guys. Because I feel like Americans are like, <laughs> don't care well, about dude, C4. Fred He's likes like, C4. <laughs> hey, no, hey, Fred. Everybody, I, I, I can find a pretty car from every generation Corvette. I t- <laughs> you just give it to I tell you, every one of them can look good. It's just, you just got to put the right flair on it here. and Leave it to those Swedes, though, to be the only ones that like the C4. <laughs> that thing, it's it's not pretty either. Like, and that, it's beat. That way of doing the, the tubs on, that way of doing the tubs, like the on the exterior of the car like that, that is a, that's a thing that, that they do over there. Like, just everything looks like yeah. that. And it's, it's, yeah. Slammed. And they're bringing it back to Sweden and hanging it up on the wall, I think. That'd be awesome. Which is kind of a cool, just the chassis, because they're taking all the, yeah. the drivetrain out and putting it in something else. Yeah, That's yeah. what I heard. Something longer. Maybe small tire would be cool. Oh. <laughs> what you do? You got it. There, there you go. go. Yeah. Just, just playing with microphones. There we go. It's, it's a fun event. I mean, I... They, there's so many D groupers, which makes it tough. But the spectator count, I've never seen anything like that. Not at a Drag and Drive. That was awesome. It Tons was of people. Crazy. Every track, it seemed like I was like, "How is this so many people here?" It's it's just like this is the now they advertise it now. This is the first year I think it's the Super Bowl of Drag and Drive. And I've said since the first year after seeing all the cars, it is. This is the All Star Game. That's yeah. what I called it because it's like all the big. Because the first year it was like all the big cars from. Rocky Mountain Race Week, all the big cars from Drag Week, all of them came to Sick Week, and now it's just a thing every year where this is like this is where all the big hitters come. Because there's 27 Dragon Drives now, or some like uh, I think that was an a excessive stat, amount. The stat that we that was like last year that we heard was like yeah, in 2024 there's gonna be like 27 Dragon the, Drives. The guys from all those, the best ones, come to Sick Week is what it seems like. Yeah, that doesn't we even love make it. sense either. That there's so many Dragon Drives now. Well, there's one. Somebody was like, "You going to the one in Nebraska?" I was like. Bro, I live in Nebraska. What are you talking about? <laughs> and there's like three tracks, and it's like there's a, there's like Kearney, and then I-29, I and then they're this, got Ottawa. Oh, is that what they're doing? Uh, yeah. Okay. And then, and then, so it's like three tracks. I'm like, this is literally in my backyard. I didn't even know it. I didn't even know they were doing one. But dra- I like drag and drive. You know, do you guys remember uh, when No Prep was real big? Like in 2013, 14. Wait, There's, it's not big anymore? It still mm, is. Nah. Well, like it, I get it was like a huge, huge thing, but it's still... No prep kings. Yeah, no, no prep, prep kings. No prep. No, yeah, no prep kings. <laughs> they spray. They spray. Shh. Is no prep they kings going to be around in 2025 or yeah. 2024? Oh, dude, that that thing's popular they as fuck. They are going to they are going to milk that show till they it's, till they can't. It's anymore. still the ratings. I it's more popular than NHRA. Discovery is going to renew. Oh, really? I don't think so. Why? Personally, I don't think so. Isn't well, it the number one show in the channel? They haven't renewed contracts yet for all the drivers yet. And Discovery Pilgrim is not interested in it because there's a massive lawsuit. Ooh. Because somebody died. One of the drivers? Yeah, on a, on a street. Oh, they did? So, like, they, because they already got rid of street outlaws. Yeah, they don't race on this. Or well, I didn't even know someone street died. Out. When was this? Did we know that? Yeah, it was it was a couple of years ago, but it's a big lawsuit. Oh. But I, I don't know. There's a, There's been a lot of talks about... NPK not being televised anymore by Discovery. It may still be able to carry on as a race. But it it's won't super be. popular. Yeah, it won't be. It, it, but it won't be uh, $40,000 a race every weekend, 30 Unless weekends Unless they could a pick year. up a streaming partner yeah. for live feeds, mm-hmm. uh, which would make it better. Right. If that was a live event and didn't come out a year later, it would be way more followable. My goodness, dude. I, I see. There's, there's. I don't even remember why I joined this group on Facebook. It's like a Street Outlaws, No Prep Kings, Trash Talk group, whatever it is. I was like, I don't even know what this is. It pops up on my feed every once in a while. These guys, it's like a soap opera for these guys. They make posts and comments like, do you guys see the episode tonight? And I was like, that happened four months ago. Like it's so they're acting, they're acting like it's the NFL game that they just watched. I'm like, yeah. this happened months ago, guys. Well, for them, it did just happen. But it's so weird. It's to me, it's weird. And they're like, it's a soap opera to them. I was like, none of that. Like the racing, when they line up and they let go of the button, everything that happens right there is real. I, yeah. I don't believe say, I don't believe a single thing else that happens on that show, buddy. I thought you were gonna say you joined the Lizzie Musi fan page and 
don't know what these guys. <laughs> oh God, I'm not. I'm not on that one. There's there's some probably. Some, I've seen probably, shared posts from it, and it's a pretty large fan page of some street outlaws guys. Probably a lot of boomers saying God bless on there. <laughs> a lot of that, but the whole show, yeah, people don't understand it's real. It's real racing. Yeah, no, the racing but is absolutely fake real. drama. Yeah, but the drama a lot, but some of the drama is fabricated. It's WWE, but then there's real racing. Yeah, like as soon as they let go of the button, you can't just like. You can't make the car do anything. It's some good race. People lose contracts because they're not dramatic enough. And they're not good enough for television. But you have to, like, it has to be a TV show. So they get contracts to be a TV show. But if they lose those contracts, I don't know if they're going to build $250,000 cars. If I, I get it's a TV show, I get they need to fabricate drama. It's just we film racing. And that's just, there's other drama to be had in other parts of it. It's like, it's, we've been to some street races where some guy ran the wrong size tire on purpose, like scrubbed the W. Oh, yeah. 10.5 and 10.5 W. He scrubbed the W off. That was the most dramatic. Th- I thought somebody was going to get their ass beat because they, they – could Almost he, did. Dude, dude. That was real drama. I was like, this is f- – what is this? is crazy. They took – like measured it and uh, all the guys came over and like flashlights everywhere. Everybody's trash talking. And then you turn on the show and you're like, what is this? This is this is the fakest thing I've seen all day. They fill up tracks though. They do that. I've been at tracks where like you know there's some fighting, and then all of a sudden you hear like a bottle hit somebody in the head. <laughs> Haven't bad at Atlanta where there was a fight, and then you hear like this handle of liquor just like dunk, Jesus. didn't break or anything. Just like that probably hurt real bad. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, it was I've, Atlanta, and it's gone now. I've been to some of these no prep king races, and I mean they're pretty fucking cool, dude. Like. I get when you watch them and they piece it together and they add the drama or whatever needs to be fabricated to, like, keep the demographic of viewer entertained. It's just it, when you're there, it is really wild, like, how it runs. Like, we were talking about the production level at this race we're seeing with, like, NHRA and or Wes and Vic and everything going on. That's, for me personally, I think it's super cool to see operations like this running at, like, peak level. and. Yeah. You know, when I was at the race, I, I'm friends with Sam, the producer and everything. And it's it's just wild, like, to watch the audio guys and the camera guys, and they're operating. They all have, like, certain drivers they follow, and everything's just, like, ran so tight. And yeah, they have to mic up, like, a whole— they're, Everybody's mic 24-7. Every single driver, the whole time they're there, it's a live mic. And it's like, <laughs> dude, it's fucking wild. It's— I mean, it's cool. It's cool because the racing is intense, and there. I mean, there's there is real drama too. But yeah, of course, like the that's dumb. Like the, the we just don't like that because we just, see real life. Well, they're fast cars too. They're going like three ninety. Oh my god, they're hella fast, dude. Yeah, it's, they're not slow. These are legit fast cars, and a couple of those cars we've seen at other events, and they've proven that they're not just. TV fast. They're real fast. Well, we mm-hmm. filmed half these guys before the show even existed. Yeah, yeah. Like, and we had j- YouTubes and, what, DVDs? Like, and when uh, real street racing happened with these guys, you know, not shutting down a road and, you know. I remember when, light trucks I remember when the, te- when the show first came out and it was, like, a huge controversy when it finally broke that they request to shut down roads and have police, like, barricaded off. That was, like, the biggest controversy in the world. It's like, I'm not surprised. Like, it's TV. What are the, like, nobody's going to sign off legally if they don't shut down this road. They have to have the drama because otherwise they couldn't get people to tune in all the time. And like I that's, said, That's like, what I'm saying. It's like a soap opera for men. <laughs> yeah. At least, yeah. I, I WWE. Mean, there you but go. WWE, they're not even fighting. That's but all then it's fake. A hundred percent fake. And it's like a fine. theater production. Like everybody comes out with their name. Like <laughs> freaking Macho Man shows up, and they're like, "Oh man, he's here." He's on yeah. Property. I mean, they do do I, that. It's kind of funny. Gonna but think the of racing's no, real. I, I'm only gonna think of the No Prep Kings guys as Macho Man. <laughs> like when they come to events, it's like, "Oh, Macho Man's here." <laughs> yeah. Like, oh no, The Rock came out of retirement. Jeez. <laughs> God. They need a Vince McMahon to just <laughs> orchestrate all of it. Like, okay, they should. They just need to combine like the personalities of WWE and the racing of. They already no have games. names like that a lot of the time. They're not far off a lot of them. Daddy Dave. But yeah, I mean, I mean you're not <laughs> Daddy wrong. Doc, right? Like oh, I like Doc. Doc Birdman. Cool. Like they already have names. Bird, like oh, they do. They do. Oh, yeah, and then go. and this Chief, is nothing the against them. Murder it's just, Nova. It just kind of felt oh, like that. <laughs> 
<laughs> at least the racing's real. Yeah. No, as soon as they let go of the button, all that's real. Yeah. Like, th- at yeah, least they're not... taking a dive. Yeah, nobody's, nobody's yeah. calling races. Nobody's telling anybody to win or lose. Like, everything I saw with the racing was real as fuck. And that, I can at least... that I enjoy that. Like, you're there... Like you said, dude, it's they're fast. Like, yeah, it's, dude, it's like, crazy. I, everyone loves racing, and that I love that part because that's the real part. Like, well, go to the it? races because, like you said, dude, there's hella fucking people there. I wouldn't want as much as I just talked. I wouldn't watch. I probably wouldn't watch the show. I, I couldn't take it. The show, and- like you said, like I literally don't think I could. I can't handle the real the reality TV kind of like fakeness. It's cringy. It's but so being cringy. at the race, it's no, sick. I could well, go that's to the part race of the conspiracy. conspiracy. Yeah. So. Oh, this get last season. Yeah. <laughs> well, this last season was supposed to come out like a week ago, and all of a sudden they were like pushing it back, pushing it back. It's not televised yet. It like it's only gonna be on the app, and like it's kind of this like rolling conspiracy that it's you know nobody's got new contracts. So I don't know. I mean, I, I, we're out of the loop with the drama and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, dude, we don't really keep up with the. Show I keep stuff. up with the business <laughs> side of it more than like the. No, that's, it's side. interesting to hear it because we I, we didn't know anything about it. So. Interesting. So and then I've had Justin Swasherm on you know twice now. He he's pretty open when he knows this stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He he probably doesn't know anything yet. I mean, I'm sure they don't keep the drivers truly in the loop. But then you end up with these cars that are kind of only no They're prep king only cars, only made for that. Yeah. They have steel roofs, but they're pro mods. So you kind of get stuck. You like can what other no classes time? can you go to? No time. Some of these guys have second cars. Some of the real hardcore guys actually still do like some smaller no prep or some other different races. They oh, have like sure, a second saw, car. We saw uh, Bobby Ducati at his oh, yeah. race in New Orleans. At the pad. And I was, he won. And I was like, which no is what's this, is this your no prep Kings car? He's like, yeah, it's from last season. I was like, and from all the other, he's like, yeah, pretty much every season until this season. <laughs> this, I was like, so this car was doing no prep kings last year. Yep. Okay. So we're doing a street race with it. Oh, and awesome. he came out and killed it. it was yeah. Sick. We we saw it at the pad. It yeah. Was, it was it was awesome. Was That's, that the um the one for was, what's it called? No, go ahead. That's in New Orleans. Yeah, but was that race? Was that the uh, New Year's Day one? No, we like haven't been one? to that one. That yet. was the oh. ninety car thing. No, we are all doing other stuff. Because yeah. the, they just did that one New Year's, obviously. Yeah, I know. So we I heard all go. about it. Uh, dude, I want to Because I feel so I got I want to go, I go I so bad. Su- such FOMO. It looked miserable. They didn't, they were racing like. <laughs> I heard it was a long, it was a long, it was long. That but, seemed miserable. I was like, I enjoy my track racing. You show up and the only thing that's not on schedule is oil downs, but there's no cops that break it up or anything. <laughs> right. But we've been to the pad a few times. They we got know. margaritas and ice cream, a food truck. Dude, Bro, like, like they're, it's, you stay entertained. It's a different. That's world a big event. There. They were grilling tacos on the start line last year. Were they not? My guy. They literally. There's a guy that pulls up with his truck, and he's got a trailer that's a grill. A right? skillet, yeah. And he sits there and just pulls up on the grass median, and you want food, just go over there, and there's a guy with drinks walking around. Like, you're just fully entertained. You can sit there, and they're actually, as as reckless as it looks to be at DePad. They keep people back off the starting line. They're yeah. like, no, get off. Like, they we're not, do like a lot. Like BJ's like, I ain't running these cars until you get back. So yeah. we can sit here all night. Well, I wonder how big a race like that gets before you're like, okay, let's just go to the top end of a track and run it backwards. Like, how big does it get? It's, where it's, it's, not, like, it's not the vibe. <laughs> I get that. No, it's just not the vibe. It looks so like weird. a track at the It's amazing. Cooper, yeah, it looks sticky there. Cooper, I'm going to tell it you the is. secret to our success with street race videos. You can't buy a ticket to it. That's all of the success right there. People watch our street race videos because you can't buy a ticket to it. If you could buy a ticket to a big to a, to a race at the top end, probably not going to buy it. You're probably not going to go because hmm. those cars are you're not going to see. But like War in the Woods seems to do well. Yeah, that event slaps. They We're seem going. To do good. We're going to be there. Because, May have 31st, you been to that track? You, There's no. a reason it does well. That Nervin. that track is it's sketchy. Every pass. It is, dude. The first time we went, it was grass between the lanes all the way down. And now there's concrete between the lanes up to like the eighth mile or something like that. But that concrete looks like it was just ready, ready, quick creep bags just poured into the grass median. But like I saw that video of my boy Nicky Bobby wheeling his car. He kind of crashed it, but he was wheeling it. I think he's bringing it back soon. I think I think, I think Uncle eventually. Sam's coming back. I don't know. I don't know if he's bringing it out to War in the Woods again. But there's that big movement of old, old. Uh, Top fuel or whatever they were, uh, top sportsman cars. 
becoming like, all those <laughs> all those bracket cars are now have new life. Yeah, I like it. They finally get to go Ducati fast. Is the same deal. Yeah, is it? And I think Jeff Lutz's was a uh, his current car that he races was like an old. Um, you talking about the GTO? Or? Yeah, I think that car used to be a. Um, like pro stock wouldn't surprise me. Like they all, they kind of like just it. get new life. Yeah, it's like it's like they, they get they, go they get bracket race, bracket race, bracket race for a decade, yep. maybe two, wore out, <laughs> and then they either get scrapped or somebody's like, oh, I want to go fast, and that's yeah. a great platform to start with. They is an old bracket tire. car? Yeah, so might they as well. Work. Like they like Nikki Bobby's car worked great the yeah. way that it was set up when the racing it war in the woods of nikki and all them like dude the racing was good you're at the top end and we all agreed that was probably some of the best actual racing that we saw the all year last year mm-hmm. it's i mean it's so tight how many times you uh let me check that like on the slow-mo it's a that well that event is just a vibe in general it is. just because especially at night the the starting line feels like you're out you're at the street Everyone's up in the trees and on the hills and on the start line and then across, and it's just like this. It's so cool. It's in a, a valley. I have a buddy that he's only watched, like, videos from that. He likes grudge racing, street racing, the type of stuff. He's never been to War in the Woods. He lives in uh, New Hampshire. He hit me up there day. He's like, is it worth it? I was like, dude, it's worth it. He's like, 10 minutes later, he's like, I booked my ticket. I'll be there in May. He, I was like, who are you coming with? He's like... Nobody. I just have to go see this thing. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'd recommend if any, any of your fans out there. Sure, you're maybe li- I need to go. If you're, dude, you should. We sat it down is. for a meeting and we had to decide what we wanted to do for this year. And every single one of the people in our on our company said War in the Woods. War in the it's Woods. The only event that we all had on our list. It's just, it's just a vibe there. It's just the track is like you show. We walked first time I walked on the starting line. I was like, where's the rest of the track? It's nuts. Like, especially when you see grass between the lanes. That was the wild. I was like, I haven't seen this. And the trees ever. all around, dude. It's just like, oh, it's so cool. Like, there's certain tracks that have vibes, and there's other tracks you go to, and you're just like, meh. Like, Carney's kind of just like, meh. But, like, Yellow Belly or, dude, Bandemir, you know? Yep. Dude, all those tracks that just, like, you just, it had its own. Pl- Yellow Belly's on the list of things I would like to. S- yeah, Freddie's to- getting there make too. A pass yeah. there. Yeah, you I know, just need to witness it. Fred you know what? It. <laughs> me too. Oh. We've been two or three times. I think I've been and, twice. Yeah. Okay, the, we've been twice. Somehow, I didn't get to go or was busy or something for both times. And it's the one track is on my list. I'm just, I just want to hit that thing. It's so, sick. It's I think we uh, have one. Gonzo said, "Jimmy Dale was Jimmy Dale doing a race there." Someone said something somebody on, your, on your status about okay. somebody. Somebody's doing some some race that's right. going on down there. Yeah, some sometime this springtime. They have fast cars down there. I mean, I've seen. I think Cali Nate. I've seen him do some. Oh, yeah. Cali Ryan Mitchell. Ryan Mitchell. Cali Nate comes out to War in the Woods. Yeah, he does. So is that Ryan car Mitchell. is fast, and the, you know that's the whole talk of like these full blown pro mods, basically. Cali Nate's just a little box body Mustang. Yeah. But it's, <laughs> yeah. it, it looks like it's just a clean little fox body, but that's a mean little unit. Yeah, so like a, it has fox body parts somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> like the body's fox body. I didn't realize it was like a pro mod. I'm sure it's got, you know, a pretty good four link back there. And there's a lot for that. Well, car he's, to work the he's way it fucking does. super hardcore racer, dude. He's like everything. Yeah. Like all the no preps, he's there. Like, I like seeing racers that just get down, just fucking race all year. Fucking Ryan. Ryan, Ryan. With if the, he shows up, people are like, "Oh shit!" Ryan it's with Ryan. the Firebird. Well, he needs to put that thing back together. I mean, he put it on the roof. He at. changes. Uh, he changes the setup on that thing, like all the time. He was the first time I saw it was Twin Turbo Big Block, like back like ten years ago. Twi- it was Twin Turbo Big Block, and it never really worked. And then went to LS, then Junkyard LS, tw- Turbo Twin Turbo Big Block Twin Turbo again, and then he went Pro Charger recently, and then he put it on the roof. And it doesn't matter what the setup is or how fast it is. He never cares about how the outside of the car looks because it doesn't matter. He still wins. It just needs to win races, and it does. Oh, so much. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that, that a car is literally a tool to turn on wind lights for most people. I've had so many people that are like, your car doesn't look pretty enough. I'm like, it literally just has to turn on wind lights. And for Ryan, that's what that thing does. And like, and I like, don't do it more than like, I don't, you know, I'm not that hardcore. I'm like, oh, freaking wind lights. But I'm like, it's literally its only job. 
Yeah, it's not. It's, <laughs> it doesn't go to the car show. It's not like that car. I don't think that was like Ryan's high school car that he's been building. Or because it's like, dude, that thing. If you were to see that, just if you were to take the wheels off of it, just have it sit in a field, it looked like it had been sitting there for fifty years. Mm-hmm. Like that thing is. It's not a nice car, but it turns on wind lights more more times than not. Like the percentage of winds on that car has got to be crazy high. Well, watching traction control get so good in these last few years has been really cool too because these cars can get down on almost any surface because of how in, intuitive their traction control is. Even like La Sala's car. You guys can mark that on your bingo cards as a La Sala reference. I, I, it's always a La Sala reference. <laughs> He's a but you can hear his car get into the traction control as well. And Well, also, it's not even traction control. It's just so many inputs that you can put into these ECU systems, none of these standalones. Mm-hmm. It's like I pull up to – like a car pulls up to a race, and I look at the ground, and it's a, a it, it's look, it looks like a shitbox car. Pulls up right next to me. I look at the ground, and there's a laser at the ground. I turn to the to the guy pouring prep. What's, what's that? What's that light? What's that laser? And he's like, looks down. He's like, I don't know. Just walks away. <laughs> It's like, oh, well, it could be wheelie checking control. tramp temp, ch- checking track temp. It could be wheelie control for distance to turn on track mm-hmm. control. So it's control. like there are so many things that you can do and just uh, so many inputs you can do to make your car work better. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking to Beater Baum a lot about that. And, you know, he offers a service where you can pay him basically. And he'll come set your car up. And he'll set your car up any like from start to finish, like planning f- and everything and going down track. Yeah, uh, B, yeah. He knows uh, what he's doing. I'll tell you that for free. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I would hire him for sure if I was trying to go. Uh, no if you guys, if you guys are trying to go fast and you guys want to do it on a small, t- whatever the hell, I'm sure Beater Bomb Joey Heichel can can figure it out for you, boys. Uh, thirty out of thirty three races. I think that was proof. in 2022. He did thirty. He went to thirty three races he and he won thirty of them. Well, that's what? unbelievable. What like? That doesn't. That happen. doesn't prove that that's street you know what races doing. too. That's street races, track races. Everything. In a new combo is what he was telling me. Also, that Big was like the, twin yeah, turbo. Yeah, that yeah. was when they switched. They were kind of trying to figure it out. He was like, "Yeah, we're struggling to figure it out." It's like struggling. <laughs> and then they got really? it. <laughs> then they got it and just killed I, it, dude. I think Joey is a pure testament of sticking with the same car and improving it over the years, mm-hmm. and just keep improving, keep improving, and test, 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 test. I think he's done so many passes in that car, and it's just the same car, been improved over the years, full chassis now and everything, but it's the same car. He didn't, like, think, I need to get rid of this and go something. No, just upgrade the car he has, and he just baby step, baby step, and now after the past 10 years, I feel like he's been racing for 20 years, but he's younger than I am. I think he just turned 30. Like, he's he's not that Uh old. Yeah. And he's been around forever, and he's put so many passes over so many years, that car is just so figured out. I guarantee he has... A tune-up for anything, any situation, any temperature, any road, anything. He has a tune-up for it. Yeah, they have they have so many laps on that car. It just doesn't even make sense. And it was cool because we had Brad Vasco on with him. So we were talking about, you know, chassis guy mm-hmm. and, like, oh, wow, the changes yeah. that they've had to make and, like, how long it had just, like, an 850 roll bar in it. <laughs> and basically, they came to the point where they're like, we have to cut this all out. We have to make this safer. And that's scary on a car, too, that works so well is to change something. Right, because then you have to thing. relearn the entire car. Oh, Everything's moves, different. Launches, everything. Yeah, it's so different having a stiff car like that. It's like it's kind of scary, honestly. Like I worry about that with my car changing anything. I'm like, am I smart enough to get it working again? But here's the thing. Once you get it, it might be a steep learning curve to get that car figured out. But once you do get it figured out, you're gold. Mm-hmm. Like, just an example, uh, Tom Bailey with his Durango Mm -hmm. sick week. Car's not figured out yet. He's like, we haven't figured out the chassis yet. We don't know what's going on here, the engine. A bunch of stuff was not figured out yet. He's like, it will do a seven. We just have to figure it out, and then it'll do it. He's like, it's not impossible. We just have to figure out where the car likes to be set up and how how to set it up. It's weird seeing a full chassis Durango. That see, I that's part of the it problem right me there. Off. That's part of the problem. I'm sure it's like because that that thing probably reacts to being launched way differently than any other car that Tom's built before. It's such so an odd thing, just in general. But it looks so cool to see that big of a tire on the back of a Durango yeah. and have it roll down the road. <laughs> the parachute location is like out the windows. So <laughs> cool, like on top on top of the glass. Yeah, it's yeah, such yeah. a weird deal. He said they had to do that, otherwise the the arrow. Yeah, probably, the arrow. Yeah. The arrow would suck it underneath. Because yeah. it's just, I mean, it's like a brick. The arrow probably. Just just like swirls around or something stupid back there. I mean, Garrett, I've seen Garrett toss the parachute in Leroy and it go whoop 
and land in the passenger seat. The arrow oh. is so, arrow's so wacky in that thing. Completely off. I think he's got a body coming for it. Yeah, they're doing some sort of rent. Rent. I saw something about it. So much just to beat LT junk. <laughs> <laughs> so much work, dude. Just to beat some just junkyard take, LT. Just to take down that old piece of uh, freaking junk. Buick Roadmaster block or whatever Jesus. it is. That car's a unit. That's one of the best. I mean, that's one of my favorite cars around right now for sure. You like. Anytime that's on the, anytime Grubworm's on the property, you can just be like, "Yep, that is a good chance, good shot at it." That video of it on FL2K, I always think about where the nose is dragging the ground at like twelve hundred feet because it's just separating so much in the back. Yeah, yeah, right in the radio. and it's like twelve hundred feet down track, and he's still driving the nose farther and farther into the ground. It's like, it's just so crazy to see it work like that. It that the wa- fascinating to watch those those big boy stick cars do work. Like I get excited. Like I I've always gotten excited for stick cars to come up, but now it's like when the stick class rolls up, it's like, well, a record could get broken right now. Like you go to some of these events, like even street car takeover, some are just stacked with street with stick cars. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah they nice. they bring a lot of stick cars to those events, which yeah. is kind of like, you know, some of the other classes don't have like a huge turnout. But then stick shift always has a great turnout. It's just like a revival of stick shift over the past few years. It's just like, well, Garrett ran that was the first GM seven. It's like, I think the fastest what was that blue fourth gen? Um, yeah, that was. Uh, shoot, I I know it, it had the GM record for so long oh, at like an eight oh seven. I just saw the car too. It's I haven't me. seen that car in years. It's either. running a different class now. It's running uh, X275. Oh. Same car, different driver. But you know the car I'm talking yes. about. Yes. It had the GM record for years, 807 or something like that. And he just never dug in and really went for it. And then all of a sudden, Garrett does a 782. And then somebody else does, just keeps chopping it down. And then other manufacturers, like two JZs and stuff, like all that. Yep. All those cars are just keep chopping it down. All of a sudden, we're down to six second stick cars. Yeah, with um, Grannis's new turbo setup and everything like this year coming out. Who has the record now? Uh, Grubworm. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, yeah Grubworm. Yep. Sixty one. Yep. Yeah, I, I so. still remember that video we filmed of him. I don't know what event it was, but it was in Florida at Bradenton, and he like broke the record. I want to say it was like six or seven times, and it was the one where his dad like resurfaced the rock. Or resurface the clutch. It wasn't six or seven times. He did break the record. But it was just like back to back to back to back. Maybe it was just he broke his personal best. Maybe. Over and over. Yeah, he just kept getting he faster just, yeah, and faster and, every pass. Yeah, it was nuts. And Fred, every time he went back, it was just faster and faster. We're like, how are you still going faster? And his dad was like resurfacing the clutch with a rock in the parking lot. Yeah, that that was wild. I was like, what are you doing? He's like, just resurface. And it would just, just do a little something and then put it back in there. And it went, went faster. faster. It's that was so cool. cool how that works. So, Fred, you spun the wheel, and it landed on what is a streetcar? Yes, sir. Whew, the million-dollar question. You know, what is a streetcar? I I will say I don't think completing Sick Week makes you a streetcar in the streetcar classes. I don't think that that's— I think it does. I don't think that these chassis cars, even if they completed Sick Week, should run streetcar class at TX. But cars. they're street legal and they're driving okay. on the street. Okay, you're talking miles. about a class now. Are you talking about a class? Or are you talking about what a streetcar? I guess what a streetcar is in general. Okay, but just to preface, I I guess that's that's where your line in the sand is on the streetcar class. Okay, no, that's there is, fair. There's the difference. No, okay, there. no, that's that's fair. You're going after streetcar class, and that's a you know. But what is just a streetcar? You don't car want you don't want Jeff Lutz to pop into your class. I understand that a car that can drive on the street now, and I, state to state now, and then what, race. What I consider, tow uh, I consider Jeff Lutz's pro mod to be a streetcar. It's a streetcar, but it can never show up to FL2K streetcar class. No. That's where the only distinction is. But then, what is an actual street? Now, car? here's the thing: I won't. I, I think it wouldn't show up because they wouldn't allow it in. Yeah, you can't have big tire, no wheelie bars, and yeah, no. The if it doesn't, all wrong. if it doesn't fit the rules, it doesn't fit the rules. But that car is a street car to me, yes, hundred percent. Because anybody at home that says, because I've had this argument with people, so many times, right? That's not a street car. I was like, well, he raced it five days consecutive days. Worked on it at least two hours, at least two hours to put it in street mode and two hours to put it in race mode every day. 
and he drove it a thousand miles in the past five days. You're going to tell me driving that car a thousand miles in five days, it doesn't make it a street car? And it has blinkers, horn, it's street insurance. Legal. All those ever, cars have to be street It legal. has everything. But that's where you lose a lot of people. A lot of people don't think you should turn a car over. All the people car. saying that have not done drag and drive and have not seen okay, these cars. Okay, but where do you? I've actually heard a lot no, of car no, guys make that argument. No, okay, like, Co- you can't just Cooper, Cooper, I'm okay. jealous. They done drag. I'll play. I'll play devil's advocate with you. Okay, where's the line then? What can't you switch over? Anything faster than me. <laughs> no, and that see, and that that's where it's a slippery that's slope. What everybody that's talking why, shit. That's is why I. there's a slippery slope there. If it's faster because, than me, it's a pro mod. <laughs> because not a street Because car. at that point, it's like, well, you can't you can't change your tires. Like, so you want if it's raining, you want people to be driving in slicks. It's like the, it's like where's the line? If they can't switch this over, they can't switch this over. Or this over, like where's the line? Actual streetcars switch their tires too. They go into race mode. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying, but where's the other line? Oh, if yeah. you're saying tires are fine. Well, okay, well, where's the next line? There's no line. If you have a VIN, you're street legal. You have all the things to be street legal, and you're driving thousands of miles, driving your family around inside the car, towing it, going state to state. Track to track and racing and doing going through drive throughs getting food, parking in your hotel. I don't see how that's not I've a street car. I've heard a psychopath type of people say if it can't pass like a state inspection, it's not a street car. That person is a horrible person to think that the state inspection is the distinct, the deciding factor of yeah, a street car. The government doesn't decide what, I, what I think a street it. car it's is. Driving that just it. It's driving it. It's driving it. I mean, they're driving it thousands of miles or on the like, street. No overdrive or no AC and heat, which then you're like, okay, so anything 60s and older is not a street car. Right. <laughs> well, my grandma used to drive with no power steering suddenly isn't a street car. It's like, did, like, where do you put the line? I consider if it like if it did it, it's a street car. Yeah. If it's street legal, if it can go out there. Now, if you're, like you said, street car class and you're, you're out there with a car that has a two gallon fuel cell and you bring like an extra five gallons to fill it up on the drive. Mm-hmm. Like you're just, that's not. Yeah. That. Cause you've seen that at, you know, streetcar takeovers where it's like, this is my streetcar. And I'm like, well, it doesn't have a radiator or a alternator. Right. It does cruises not fit like shutting class. it off to like coast some of the time. And well, right. a lot of them don't do street cruises anymore. Yeah. They a should. lot of these. Yeah. But, I don't care about the street cruise. I really don't. It just it's a waste of time when I'm at the track. Well, it doesn't improve no. it. It wastes my time. I, I'm gonna say no. It, it wastes my it's a time. Okay, because you know your car's gonna make it. Now, now, maybe. <laughs> now, real quick, we're saying now. Let's say if 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 Lutz shows up and his car is already turned over, so it's already in race car mode, and then the deciding factor is it needs to go on a 35 mile cruise now. You don't like the cruise anymore. Or do you like the cruise now? You like the cruise now. So yeah. we're going to go on a 35-mile 35 35 mile cruise. He's not going to make it, and you're going to like the cruise. Yeah. Yep. You like the I cruise because he's faster than you. That's why. I just – I genuinely don't care to do them. Like, if it's, like, 10, 11 a.m. and I'm at the racetrack, like, the last thing I want to do is, like, just go cruise my car. Then <laughs> get in a different class, Cooper. But they're very limited. What am no, I going to do? Extreme no, 28s? No, no, Cooper just wants to come kick puppies in the streetcar class with his, <laughs> with his mini mod and think that he's like, well, as long as Lutz doesn't show up, I, I I'm not that bad. torque arm and people like freaking La Sala show up with this, you know, dialed okay, in okay. race car. I think we've established that Cooper hates anything faster than him. He said it. Of course. So. I mean, I'm, you know, I've outed myself. He did. Yeah. Came out of the closet about it. Wait. <laughs> you know, I don't like anybody faster than me. I'm start, I'm starting to think that we might have found the rat for who protested La Salle last year. Uh-oh. I did. I actually claim I you know I said that too. Oh. I protest anybody even if they're not in the same class as me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a one piece front end. That's a it's one piece a front one end. It's a one piece front end for sure. It's and five it, pieces now. Now it's all of them and it's lighter. Yeah, Which that's the funny. worst part. It's like, he's like, that's fine. We'll just come with more parts and it'll be lighter next year. Isn't I was it? over talking with him and Tom Bailey and they were like talking about the whole, making jokes about how many pieces it was. And Tom's like, yeah, next year we're going to make sure that all the little pins on the hood of the, have to be the same color as the car. And I was like, you could just write Brett LaSala is not allowed at our <laughs> event. <laughs> yeah, We all just started laughing. I He's mean, got that car dialed, dude. Oh, yeah, that car works so I well. I love seeing those winning shoes, those pimp alligator shoes. Have you seen them shoes? Oh, I've seen them. The coolest shoes. Many times. Him. He breaks them out a lot. Yeah. <laughs> he win- yeah, he wins a lot. He does win a he lot. He breaks them out it's quite amazing. a bit. So, you know, just to 
<laughs> that was a joke. I don't protest people. I actually one time lost to a twin turbo big block and he shouldn't have been in the class because it was big blocks weren't allowed. And I lost to him in the finals and I still didn't protest. I took my loss with pride. Damn, respect. I should have protested it. Now he's just going to tell people for the rest of his life that he should have protested. I should have protested. Just to, just to say he didn't protest. <laughs> <laughs> Should have protested it. You should have. <laughs> I got gapped, though. Like, I got real gapped. Well, Big Block Twin Turbo will do that to you. <laughs> yeah, he was like, he said, see you later, nerd. Type of deal. I, I don't know. Maybe it was Garrett that protested. You know, it seems like him. And then he hired LaSala, so, you know, you just kind of. It's all. <laughs> He hired him so he can (laughs) fire him. He he hired him so he'd be like, you beat me. I was talking to Brett. I was like, if you read that contract, are you allowed to race, (laughs) (laughs) Garrett? Like, it's just in the fine print. Like, you cannot Must must throw any race against against ownership. Cannot line up against Doug Cook, Andy Cook, or (laughs) Clean (laughs) Jeez, that would be hilarious. All of a sudden, just his car just doesn't stage right when he's just racing those three guys. (laughs) He he, he, he red like just just against those three? It's in the bylaws. You can't control that. Never seen a red light before. The next, if I see them at a track and they're racing each other, I'm going to go ask Garrett Beck, so does he get fired if he wins, or how's it's a good chance? Work? I mean, it's questionable. I, well, do, I do think that was a really smart hire because he's a super, super smart guy. Yeah. Bre- Brett's a freaking genius. Yeah, that's so, a good addition. Yeah, you just you just, you just just made yourself a lot of money with a bunch of new streetcar stuff. And he's moving down here so I can harass him to help me on my car, which is nice. Oh. Moving down to Bradenton. Nice. Yeah. So, very nice. TBM is like 10 minutes from here. Yeah, it's yep. not far. Yeah, and then... Yeah, so that'll be convenient. Moving out of Orlando, there you go. down to here because he left Real Street because Real Street's kind of like all over the place. I don't even know what their future is. There are a couple people that have left. Seems like I didn't. I I saw Real Street like a Real Street booth at Sick Week. I didn't recognize more than two people at the booth or walking around. I really like those guys and everything. I just think that they're avoiding a lot of EPA stuff. Oh, um, there's a lot of shops that, oh, yeah. They oh, just yeah. don't want to deal with well, EPA you, stuff. Yeah, you can't even do stuff for street cars. So, so they opened a firearm shop. <laughs> yeah, like, I saw that. Yeah. Like, oh, we don't want to deal with the EPA. <laughs> What's the next most American thing we can do? Race Let's deal with the ATF. Fair enough. ATF. <laughs> that seems easier, I guess. Well, it's cool. Yeah, I mean, there is actually a Second Amendment for them, at least. Yeah. It's not really a Second Amendment or anything for us. Maybe we could go the founding in. fathers didn't know about race cars. <sighs> right. I feel like they would have really liked them. Yeah, they would have. That's for sure. Oh, 100%. What they have driven? Dude. dude, George Washington. What would that's George a, Washington a, have driven? Big block nitrous guy, myself. Yeah. And I think he would have been big block nitrous. Guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was basically. That, can we go over some historical figures and what they would have driven today? That might be. Like like Nixon or like JFK or something. What, what, did, what would Lincoln drive? A today? pro mod. Lincoln, would, Lincoln wouldn't fit in a pro mod. No, they'd have a special one. His hat would be sticking out. JFK would have probably drove <laughs> something non-convertible, if I were to guess. Mm. Uh, I think the convertible really, <laughs> really got him. Yeah. <laughs> he probably wouldn't have been in Dallas that no, day No, it's, it's a really good call, yeah. I, I don't think he would go with a convertible. <laughs> maybe, maybe like a limo or something yeah. a little bit more. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe like an armored vehicle. <laughs> that would have been most ideal. And... um Nixon probably, I mean, Nixon was, he probably would have driven something that, you know, like. Remember the hate tank? That, like, gangster black slam car? That's what. Yeah, the hate tank. What happened to that? I don't know. Dude, I miss seeing him come to events. Yeah, that thing was like, that was like the ultimate, like, they would never tell me the setup on the car. So every time it became a joke, I would just walk over to the car and just make up the setup on the spot. That wasn't the one with the big blower out the hood, right? No. No, it was okay. just black and green. Do you remember one wow. time uh, what they did with Tech? They drove like 10 hours to this event, and then Tech wanted to see under their hood, and he's like, nah. And he loaded it back up and drove home. Must be pretty cool. Or no, he said he would load it up and drive it back home, but he didn't. He oh. raced. They're like, well, no, okay. He, I, we, I saw him get into a wreck once. The hood came off oh, during yeah. the wreck. He took his racing jacket off and threw it over the engine before anybody got there. Yep. Because hmm. it didn't have a hood anymore to protect it. I was like, they're serious what? about it. Those donk guys kind of get like that too. The donk racers. We need to go to it. Yeah. So, so that's so that's on that's on our list for this year. We I don't know. We don't know one. which one we're going to yet. Because on apparently the good ones are 
East Coast, right? Well, yeah, but the good ones are like you have to know about them. It's kind of like street racing for us. Like you got to know about them yeah. when they're happening beforehand because they're not exactly making Facebook groups. For that them. Boost Doctor guy seems like he's really the guy. He's got his shit figured out, Can dude. We do a video? Yeah. He's got the F, he's got an F body now that's like four linked F body. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. on twenty eight. We posted or whatever. that. We posted that thing a couple weeks ago. That thing's cool, dude. He even on his even on his box Chevy. That thing is way faster than a donk car should be. Mm-hmm. They got that thing figured out. And his new chassis, like the fourth gen chassis car, that's going to be. I don't know what the hell they're doing with that thing. Which I always thought a donk had to be like a specific car. Like so it had to be like a G body or technically something. a donk is a seventy one to seventy six. Caprice or Malibu? That's what I. Uh, that's thought. what a donk is. And then what now wheels you can get. Now you can also have a box Chevy and stuff like that, and you can just have big wheel cars, whatever. But a donk specifically is a. I believe I'm, I'll get corrected by. Somebody. Is there a size wheel that it has to be as well? Twenty eight, I think. Twenty. It's twenty something. Up. Man, it might be twenty eight. But then they're making tires for them now, stickier tires, I guess. Yeah, I heard. I heard somebody was doing something for yeah. them. Yeah. Ooh, so, good. Yeah. So they actually stick now. Hell yeah. But, uh, yeah, the Malibu thing's weird because, like, how many Malibus are there and you're going to build? Like, there's only so many of those. So, like, open it up to whatever. But then you ended up just putting a Pro Mod with some donk wheels on <laughs> Dude, it. Dude, I'm here for it. Dude, I want to yeah. see I want to see that Everything thing run sevens. I want to see a fourth-gen chassis car on 28s run sevens. Oh, they're running fours in the eighth. I mean, they're already, like, that's a seven-second car. I, I want. I want to see it. I want to see. We want to go to the best dunk race we can find. Yeah. Uh, anybody yeah, that up. anybody out there in Cooperland? Yes. Uh, if you happen to know where the behind the scenes uh, underground donk races are in the I get Carolinas area, people I, are going to tag uh, Donk Master. Well, but you need to go deeper than that. Everybody knows Donk Master. He's yeah. awesome. We need but to go deep. You need to get like some guys that aren't as well known. Right. Because, right. Know, Hit us up, uh, hit me up on Instagram, Fred underscore 1320 video, and tell me where the dawn races are if we want to go to one this year, like yeah, a good one. That was low facts, Solid one. Facts. All right. I'm in for that. Well, I know it's late, guys. Thanks for coming on. We can uh, wrap this up. Uh, they can follow you guys at, uh, you tell them. I'll oh, watch it. Uh, 1320 video, Fred underscore 1320 video. Sorry, I guess any closing thoughts? Anything we need to add, Fred underscore 1320 video. Yeah, that's Follow on it. That's on Instagram, and then I don't really do anything else. Yeah, then I Instagram, crystal clear, but it's C-R-Y-S-T-I-L-L because it's still photography, but crystal clear underscore 1320 video. Very thought out. Yeah, I like this. Well, guys, this is fun, our yearly after sick week. Yeah, we'll do it next year. <laughs> we'll do it next year. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it's not a full year, but yeah, we'll, we'll do it again. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks, right, buddy.